Tim Ord on the line. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. How can you are you me? doing? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. I'm, Perfect. I'm good. I can hear you. Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Good, so, fantastic. Well, we got uh, your charts up here. The first one we're looking at is uh, on gold. I'm interested to hear what you have to say on this. All right. Uh, yeah, th this is actually the gold chart, and it goes back to a long time, 2005. And uh, I put some cycle lines on there. There's a red cycle line, and there's a blue cycle line. And one, the red one's an eight-year cycle line, and the blue one's... Uh, a 16-year cycle line. Anyhow, over over the course of years, uh, the eight year, uh, the eight year, and, and uh, 16 years, I've done a good job picking out uh, decent lows. And the last low was picked out in what 2016. That was when the eight year and and the 16 year corresponded uh, right on the money. And now we have the eight year coming in effect. And I present this chart. At least six months ago, uh, on your on your program, and you know, late 2003 or 2023, um, the eighth year cycle is going to hit a low. Well, we're hitting it right now, and it seems to be lining up pretty well. And I did some Fibonacci uh, stuff on this chart from the low of 2016 up to the uh, high of 2021. The market gold itself. This is the uh, cash gold, only a trace at 38.2% 38, uh, 38 retracement. Uh, so that's a small retracement. If you retrace anything less than a half, a lot of times this is at least a halfway point of the next move up. Uh, so we could see a powerful rally, I think, coming. we got the cycles about right for a rally. The Fibonacci relationship seems to be working out. Uh, the more times you test the high, you know, we tested that 2,000 high a little bit actually over that three times, probably the next time we go through. A lot of times you go through the third time. Uh, but the fourth time even gets a higher percentage that you'll probably break through that 2,000 level and head on up. Uh, the top window is the uh, RSI of, uh, this is actually a monthly chart, but when the RSI is above 50, usually that's when uptrends happen. That's what I noted all in blue there. Uh, so we had a kind of a bear market uh, starting in 2012 down to this 2016 low. That's when the RSI was below uh, um, 50. And in general, it stayed above 50. And we're currently uh, above 50 right now. We're at 54.50. Uh, so uh, we had a little dip here last year, but we got back up. RSI got back above 50. So there's quite a bit of evidence that uh, important something on a bigger time frame is about to happen and this is on a monthly time frame so uh, Fibonacci uh, say you know this is probably a halfway point of the move up the uh, cycle work is is on for a, a move now the RSI has been above 50 for the last uh, about year I think at the last August has hit that low and so everything's kind of set so let's, let's move on to um, the next chart, and that's gold. So gold, um, it looks r really bullish, um, bullish going forward here. So let's look at the next chart, chart number two. We got it right here, GDX ADP. Yep. And uh, um, this is uh, the monthly, the top one is the monthly GDX. Uh, and the, uh, the bottom window is the monthly GDX up-down volume, and it's a cumulative. And the next window higher, uh, which is the middle window, is the monthly GDX advance uh, decline cumulative, and it's cumulative volume. And there's a couple things I want to uh, point out. Uh, these, when these give signals, a lot of times they're multi-year. So this is not a short-term chart. And so far, um, what, what I want to really point out, uh, if you notice, if you go back to 2012, uh, both those indicators closed below the mid Bollinger band, and that's your sell signal. And it stayed bearish all the way into 2016, and then they closed above the mid Bollinger band. That's the blue line. When it closes below the mid Bollinger band, it's the red line. So you can see, you know, it gave a signal in 2016, stayed long into 
uh, late 2017, gave a sell signal, uh, then gave a buy signal back in 2019, gave a sell signal in 2021. And right now, uh, both indicators are still below the mid Bollinger band. But I have uh, shaded uh, pink areas there uh, to identify times when this it gets below uh, extreme lows, I guess you might say. The lowest it's ever been was 2016 on the middle chart. Uh, it touched that level in 2018. But we've been in this yellow or this uh, pink area since 2021, kind of more or less kind of trended sideways here. Uh, we got above the mid-Bollinger Band actually a couple of different times and kind of came back down. Uh, but I think once it, next time it turns up, probably going to just stay up. But we're in an important area, according to history, uh, because we're in that pink zone, this middle chart right now, the pink zone, which is, I think is a, a very oversold condition. A lot of times you get this oversold, do you really get good rallies out of it? And the bottom window, uh, which is advanced, or which is the up-down volume, it actually got below the 2016 low. So it's really, on a historical level, extremely oversold. And it, too, right now, is still below the mid-Bollinger band. But uh, these are big time frames here. So once they do close above the mid-Bollinger band, at some point they will, and we think will probably be sooner than later, they, they are late giving a buy signal, but they basically get majority of the rally. So even though they haven't uh, gave buy signals yet, but it flipped to chart three. So we are this, there. this is, uh, yeah, the chart three, uh, you know, that was the previous chart, chart two, was a monthly time frame. This is the same indicator, but on a weekly time frame. And so they're, they're going to get shorter signals. These are multi-month signals. Most of the time, they're usually anywhere from uh, two months to six months signals. So you'll get where the monthly charts may stay long for, you know, two, three, four years. Uh, the weekly cycles will give cycle in and out of uh, short-term signals that may last a couple of months, uh, may stay a long or short, maybe six months. The last signal it gave, on both signals or on both indicators, which is the up down volume cumulative and the advanced line cumulative was back in April of this year. It gave a sell signal as both close or either one can close below it. Either one does. That's the signal, but uh, both turned down in April of, of this year. And now for the first time, both are closing above the mid Bollinger band. So uh, I, I hear yeah. the music. So. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, Tim, because I, I want to keep hearing some more about this. We got some few charts uh, yet to go through. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll right. be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Go check him out. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. We left off. We're looking at the GDX. Uh, Tim, are you still with us? Yep, I'm here. So yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we can, we can continue. So we looked at the uh, yearly gold going back to I think what 2005, wherever it was. All the cycles works are uh, in sequence right now. Then we looked at the uh, monthly cumulative up down volume advanced client indicators. That was chart two, and both of them are extremely oversold uh, on the monthly time frame. They haven't closed above mid Bollinger band, but uh, now we're looking at the weekly up-down volume advanced client indicators, and uh, now we have closed above the uh, mid-Bollinger band. So the weeklies are on a buy signal. Uh, I didn't show the dailies because the dailies actually flipped to a buy signal here, I don't know, a week or two ago. Uh, so they're more responsive, but they whip around longer or more. Uh, the, the weeklies are less whippy. But they're still a little bit late, so you didn't get in at the bottom. But most, once you get the, the weeklies turn up, you know, as, like you said, you don't get whipped around a lot. But I'm, I'm saying if we just start in a bicycle on the weeklies, most of those signals last at least two months, and a lot of them last six months. So this signal is probably good all the way into year end. So in general, we think we're probably going to move uh, in the uh, – all the way into year end. 
And if you flip back to chart number two, um, for a second anyhow, if the weeklies are on a bicycle and it runs into year end, the monthlies will flip to a buy signal because both indicators will be going up. So if the monthly flip to a buy signal, chances are this could be a multi-year uh, buy signal currently going on. So this may uh, essentially go all the way into 2025, maybe 2026. Uh, so, uh, so this could be a big signal. You know, the market's just been really kind of choppy uh, since 2021, we need an impulse wave to start. And these indicators suggest that's probably going to happen here over the next month or next couple of months. Uh, we're probably, on a bigger time frame, we're starting an impulse wave. And actually, that impulse wave, my opinion, probably started last August. Uh, this consolidation we had down from the April high was just part of a, a bigger uptrend. But uh, uh, anyhow, we, we do think a multi-year probably rally is starting here. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah, fantastic. We, we can, uh, or you have questions on it? Or, no, or no, I think it's just a uh, very convincing uh, analysis on that. Okay. Um, we can go to chart four. Okay. All right, here we uh, have. That, we're going we're gonna to switch to uh, the S&Ps, both the four and chart five are on the S&Ps. And this is what I like to happen. This is a zwag breath thrust indicator. And in a nutshell, it's the uh, advancing issues by total uh, issues and take that uh, and do a 10-day average. And so when, it's, when it has to hit down 0.4, it has to run to 0.6 in 10 days. In general, that this mirrors what the zwag breath thrust indicator really does. And so we did get a, a reading below um, uh, point four here uh, about a week ago, um, and we need a run now to above point six by October nineteenth, which is Thursday. And we're coming in right now around point five three. So in general, for this to trigger, we need the market to actually continue to rally into uh, uh, this Thursday to trigger this indicator. Why is it important to trigger this indicator? This indicator is good for picking out intermediate term lows. If you notice, uh, I have the red and blue lines across the uh, chart, and that tells you when the uh, zwag breath thrust uh, zwag breath thrust indicators was triggered. If you notice, they all come at you know powerful bottoms, and we had uh, three triggers back at that consolidation phase uh, from. Uh, 2022 to 2023, all around that oh, uh, 4,000 level on the uh, SPX. And uh, you got three of them in that range. So that was a very bullish signal to get three uh, over that time period in a year. So that's the reason why it's kind of extremely bullish in that sideways consolidation, because it triggered three breath thrust, uh, uh, you know, the zwag breath thrust. It, it did it three times, so that was a pretty powerful signal. I'm hoping it's going to do it coming into Thursday. If it does uh, do it in Thursday, it doesn't really need to, but if it does, it would add to the bullish picture because I'm thinking we're going to probably rally all the way to the uh, year end. I'm not saying we're going, to, we're going to have some mild consolidations along the way. We will, but uh, in general, that would be a powerful sign if this indicator can give above 0.6 by Thursday, and it's possible, you know, the market is off a little bit today, but if uh, Monday or if uh, Wednesday and Thursday rally, that may trigger that point six area, and that's all we need. So will it do it? Not for sure. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But here's another indicator on page, or uh, last, go to pay our chart five, and uh this is a, a ten. Day, the second window up from the bottom is the uh, ten-day average of the trend. And usually, when it gets above uh, point two, it's it's a bullish sign for the market. That's when uh, panic happens, and a trend reading above one point two is usually a bullish sign because that's where uh, more selling, uh, in other words, volume goes into the down stocks, and that's usually a good sign. That's what bottoms are made of. And when it gets uh, 
down below 0.9, that's usually kind of a worrisome sign that the market uh, has rallied too much too soon, and usually you get pullbacks. And all the red lines on this chart show the times when the trend was 0.9 or lower. Currently, we're at 0.86. Sometimes this um, can be a little bit early. Uh, so if we do rally this week, this is option expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias, and so we could possibly rally into Friday. Uh, even if we do, we'll probably have uh, next week down. Option expiration week normally leans bullish. So it's, it kind of has a bullish lean. And this indicator, even though it's 0.86 on a 10 day average, it can be, it can delay a two, three day, you know, there, uh, before the, that bearish signal tricks, uh, kicks in. So if the market does rally, I'm still thinking we're going to have a, a, a pullback. In the market, if it doesn't start, maybe Friday, it'll probably start next week. Uh, so, how big the pullback will be, I uh, don't know. It could be at worst case 4,200. We could test the previous low at worst, uh, but it would be a, a pullback that you should buy because the bigger trends up. I think we'll hit we'll hit new highs going to year end, and we're we're entering into one of the most uh, bullish seasonality periods. Uh, that start actually uh, after next week, uh, the end of October, the first of November, usually starts a really bullish seasonality. So, but it could be a little bit choppy between now and then. And I'm, I'm thinking, uh, so got to be a little bit careful here over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely, Tim. Thank you so much. Uh, we're really looking forward uh, to Tuesday to see if the uh, Zweig breath indicator, uh, or excuse me, the thrust, how that pulls out. And uh, just thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure. All right, thank you. Yep, Tim, have a good day. All right, folks, be right back. Uh, just stay there.